Welcome, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Cameron Delano, Security Solutions Architect with F5, and in this video, we'll be going over the API security capabilities offered by the F5 Distributed Cloud Web App and API Protection Service. Throughout this video, we will walk you through several key features. First and foremost, we will demonstrate how simple it is to activate the API protection and discovery capabilities within the platform. You'll see firsthand the ease of enabling this essential layer of security. Next, we'll explore the functionality of discovering shadow APIs. We'll guide you through the process of downloading the learned schema and seamlessly importing it into our API definition. This streamlined workflow ensures that your APIs remain secure and compliant. Next, we'll showcase the effectiveness of schema validation in action. You'll see how the platform actively verifies the conformity of API requests and responses to the defined schema, providing an additional layer of security for your APIs. To conclude, we'll take a quick glance at the endpoint security posture and dashboards. This comprehensive view allows you to assess and monitor the security status of your endpoints, empowering you to make informed decisions. So let's go ahead and get started. For this demo, we have a distributed cloud load balancer that is fronting the OWASP Foundation's completely ridiculous API. Now, since we've not enabled any protection or uploaded the specification file, we have no insight into the structure of the API. And without this, we have no way of protecting it from attack. Luckily, enabling API protection and discovery on the platform is extremely easy. Click on the three dots next to our load balancer and select Manage Configuration. Once the configuration page renders, we click Edit Configuration in the top right, and using the menu to the left, navigate to API Protection, and once there, use the API Definition drop-down menu and select Enable. Next, we click the API Definition Selection drop-down and click Add Item. This takes us to the API Definition Creation page. Once there, we give our definition a name, and in the Swagger Spec drop-down, we select Upload File. Here we name the Swagger spec, upload the file, and click Continue twice. Next, we need to enable and configure spec validation. Under the Validation drop-down menu, we select All Endpoints. We then select View Configuration to edit the default. We'll leave the Request Validation Processing mode on Validate and the Enforcement type on Report. Next, we'll choose our Request Validation properties. We'll keep the defaults of Query Parameters, path parameters, and header properties, and add content type, cookie parameters, HTTP body, and security schema. For response validation, we'll set the mode to validate, leave the enforcement type on report, and add content type, HTTP body, and response code to the response validation properties. Next, we configure fall-through mode for any APIs that are not in our specification. These are our shadow APIs. Here we'll choose custom, and configure our custom fall-through rule list. Once in the fall-through rule page, we select Add Item to create our rule. We'll give the rule a name and select our action. For the demo, we'll leave it at Report, but we may choose to block or skip and continue processing the request. We'll set our rule to apply to the base path and choose the value suggested by the platform. Finally, we need to enable Discovery. Here we click the API Discovery drop-down menu to select Enable. Now by default, Discovery only learns API endpoints and patterns from traffic with response codes of 200. To also enable learning on response codes of 300, click the Learn from Traffic with Redirect response and choose Enable. Now we won't be configuring it for the demo, but I just wanted to highlight the sensitive data detection capabilities of the platform. If required, you can disable a built-in detection based on your requirements. For example, if you're outside the United States and have a different social identification format, you can disable the social security number detection and add a custom sensitive data type. And now that we've finished our configuration, we scroll to the bottom of the page and choose Save and Exit. And that's it. It's that easy. Now we need to generate some traffic for the platform to learn from. To do this, I'm going to use the official Postman collection for the API and Runner function to generate some traffic. For the sake of timing, I've sped this up to give the platform time for the process to run and learn the schema from the traffic. Next, we'll move on to demonstrate the results of the learning and shadow APIs.
Now let's head to the security dashboards and see what the platform has learned. Here we can see that we've made some discoveries. To get to the API endpoints dashboard, you can click from the API classification tile or at the tab at the top of the page. In this dashboard, you can see APIs that were discovered as well as any inventoried or shadow APIs if there are any. Now the difference here is inventoried APIs are the ones that we have definitions for, and shadow APIs would be discovered APIs that were not in the definition. Here we can see the post to identity API auth verify was not in the specification and is a shadow API. And now that our API has been discovered, we can download the spec that's been generated from the learning. Now let's head back and edit our configuration and add the learned specification to our API definition. We just edit our definition and under Swagger spec, choose add item to upload the learned spec for identity API auth verify as a supplement to our existing specification. Now, as a best practice, it's recommended to inspect and validate the learned schema and incorporate that into your overall specification. But for the sake of the demo, I'll just be applying the learn schema directly as an addition to the base schema. Now let's head back to our dashboards and take a look at our API tree. Here you can see identity API auth verify is no longer a shadow API and is in our inventory. And now we can protect it from attack. Now let's run some schema validation checks. Once again, we'll be relying on the official Postman collection to generate our traffic. We'll modify the body of the request and remove some expected content. In this case, we'll remove product ID and quantity from the post to the create order API. We'll also set authorization to no auth to remove the expected header. Now we'll send a few requests and then take a look at the security analytics. Here we can see the events generated by our traffic. If we dig deeper into the logging, we can see our violations. We have a security schema violation due to our missing auth header, as well as the HTTP body violations from our missing properties. Now let's take a look at endpoint security posture in the dashboards. Here in the API endpoints dashboard, we can see data on our top attacked APIs listed in order of percentage of attacks, the top three sensitive data types found, the total API calls and their response codes, and the most active APIs. In the table view of our inventory, we have data related to each endpoint. Here we can see if any sensitive data types have been found, the threat level of the API based on volume of attack traffic, the authentication status, API category, and calculated risk score. If we click on the endpoint, we can see additional details related to its health, authentication, both learned and inventoried specification, and security posture. In the security posture tab, we can see vulnerabilities found. In this case, our JSON web token has some issues. We can also see the description of the vulnerabilities found, as well as risk score, evidence, and remediation. I hope you've enjoyed this quick demo of some of the API protection capabilities of the F5 distributed cloud platform. The connected world runs on APIs. Your banking app uses them, your rideshare app uses them, even that weather app you check before walking out the door, it gets that data from an API. We interact with them multiple times throughout our daily life to do everything from the most essential to the most mundane. They are simply everywhere and more and more are being published every day. Given the sensitive nature of the data that can be exposed by unprotected APIs, the need for effective security cannot be stressed enough. Thank you and thanks for tuning in.